Hello, folks. You are in Losi's locker room. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for joining. I'm your host, John Losi, here in the locker room for the first time, solo as I am. Looking to have a good time this evening. We're going to talk about lacrosse. We're going to talk about pretty, pretty much anything under the sun. This is a open forum for me just to go on and ramble to a certain degree. Uh, I've got a couple of guests out there. Uh, I sent some invites out. So this is going to be freewheeling. We could have people popping in whenever we want. We were supposed to have uh, Colin's Corner this evening with head coach of the University of Detroit Mercy Titans, Chris Colin, but he was detained at the last moment and had to cancel. And as you can see, I broke out the new official shirt of Losi's locker room, ESPN's finest, providing me with top-notch gear so that I can double as a broadcaster, as a, I don't know, Hawaiian guy, I guess, surfer, Brady Bunch. I don't know. Look at that. We're getting dings already, folks. And out, right out of the gate, see, I told you it was going to be free-flowing. Not the best. I'm telling you, I, listen, I was just telling the folks out there, I was I was talking about the shirt, Bull. So joining <laughs> folks is head coach of Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Mr. Greg Bull Durham. And like I said, I just threw a bunch of random invites out, so I have no idea who's going to be popping in. Oh, that's cool. That's I, great. Right? So I put yeah. it up. You know, I, 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 set the, I set the meeting up. I just sent emails and texts and said, hey, it's an open forum. It's it's kind of like my own basement, bull. I mean, it's the locker room, right? I mean, the doors open. Right. Locker yeah. Room, right. Yeah, absolutely. I just got home a little while ago from practice, so it's been kind of crazy, you know. So. Uh, oh well. Hey. Yeah, it's all good. It's I, all good. It's, uh, I like. I get. It's just getting. Uh, hey. Just getting uh, dressed down a little bit from that cold, you know, tonight, and then uh, just kind of just rolling in, and then like you get your little text. Hey, you want to join the locker room? Like, yeah, absolutely. Have some fun, man. Why not? A little de decompressed, you know? Exactly. And uh, that's about it. And get ready to go at it again tomorrow. We have the game tomorrow night, so it should be pretty cool. So I know. Well, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know if I told you in the text, but it was supposed to be Colin's corner this evening, and, and Coach Colin was uh, detained, uh, not by the police or uh, Homeland Security. At least I'm not, you know, I, I don't think so. I hope not. I mean, knock on wood, I can reach out to Liz and check, but uh, he was not able to join us. I, I had the shirt on, right? And but this is the new official shirt of Losey's Locker Room. Bull, what do you think? That's pretty nice. Uh, you know, you, you know, start selling those or what, what's going on over there? You know, well, already, and I got to tell you, and, and this is kind of funny, I already had a, a good friend of mine who said, listen, I want that shirt. I want you to sign it. And I'm putting it in a frame and I'm putting it in my basement. I don't even want it to go on the air. So it was like, it was almost like a silent auction at Sotheby's. <laughs> That's what I'm talking. Oh about. yeah, so uh, you've been watching a lot of lacrosse. Yeah, you know, I was. Uh, what's interesting is, Bull, is I'm gonna I'm gonna lay some uh, some news on you. Is that uh, we've got some official rankings um, from Lax numbers that just came out today for the state of Michigan. Yeah, I saw them. Oh dang it! See, I thought I was gonna spring your 14th ranking on you, buddy. But uh, yeah, you know it's good. I mean, I don't think we're even there. I mean, we got some time yet. Um, with the, the one nice thing is we've played games. Right. I mean, we've played six games. Yeah, you guys three and three. Yeah, three and three. We're we're doing all right. We're getting better every day. That's all that matters. And kids are having a blast. And yeah, that, you know. that, yeah. I mean, that that's the big thing, right? I mean, the the overriding theme, and and I, you know, I, I, it's my own decisions, right? I mean, my my whole new philosophy on life is is you're not a victim of your circumstance, but really nope. of your decisions. And and I end up talking a lot about lacrosse, but. I enjoy it. It's the passion, you know, and, and, and so, you know, I had an hour conversation with, with a dad today and, you know, we, we got down to the end of it and I just said, listen, in the end, you know, our, 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 the, the kids are playing, right? I mean, you know, we can see a finish line, we can see an ending to a season, you know, knock on wood that, that we get through this and get to June, but, you know, two, three weeks ago, a month ago, we had no idea, right. If, no. if we're going to have a season. No, I mean, you know, it, everything was delayed. The schedule was done. Like my schedule was done. You know, your schedule is always evolving, but it's mostly done. Like you have the Catholic league came out and, you know, we came out of their schedule like last August, they gave it to us. So 
those things were set in stone. And, you know, I always have the same games every year that I'm always adding like EGR and, you know, those, those type of games are always going to be there. Like, I'm not going to, I know that they're going to be on my schedule, right. Just because of relationships I have with coaches. And then I always try to add a couple new teams that I've never played before. Like, you know, Rob Dameron, who's the head coach at Dakota, he and I are friends. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I met him. We played cards one night with a bunch of other guys that, you know, a bunch of my, my butt CC buddies that we, he came on over that he plays Michigan state with like Stan Zidell and Jerry Rio and, and uh, Mike Sullivan was there. Um, and uh, we were just hanging out and I'm like, Rob, if you want to play a game, let's, 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 let's schedule it. I, I don't care if you're, you know, they're in the, they're in their beginning stages of developing a program and Rob's a really good coach. And I'm like, so what I go, I don't know what I'm going to have. Let's just play. You know, it doesn't matter. We played this weekend. We, I mean, we beat them. I mean, but you know, it's like, but the thing is we got a game and then he's like, Hey, do you want to schedule another JV game? I'm like, absolutely. Let's, let's get our JV guys together again. Yeah. Um. So it's just like, you know, those things are great and you have good relationships with the, with the guys that you coach against. Um. It really does help your program out. And that's one thing, like I said, Rob's, you know, that game I added, I added Lakeview, Battle Creek Lakeview, who's a pretty decent program. I, I've never seen them play, except I just saw them on film. Um, they're, they got some athletes. Yeah. You know, that's really great. And it's like Battle Creek. Who would have thought, you know, you know, 10 years ago, Battle Creek has, has a program. Hey, I Listen, I know Battle Creek. I went to Albion Bowl. And so, right. you know, I, I got to tell you what, you know, and then again, this is the 90s. Uh, but we'd go to Battle Creek uh, to the to the uh, the Chi-Chi's. The Chi-Chi's. Yeah place in battle creek there right oh, yeah. right near the mall and uh you know uh, uh great margaritas and uh Jimmy oh. and oh, yeah. you know we'd have pledges drive us down and uh and and we'd have fun and we'd be safe but uh yeah that's battle creek well i went to western so i know battle creek i was always driving there on the way back you know so or are there right so they're up uh, one, of my, one of my best friends is from battle creek and i told him i go they got a lacrosse program and he's what i'm yeah. like yeah because he's in ohio now he's like I'm like, oh yeah, Battle Creek uh, Lakeview, and I, you know, he went to St. Phil's there, and I'm like, I think St. Phil's has a unified team with another school. I'm not sure, but it's just, it's amazing that some of these programs are popping up. Like in my region, like Ovid Elsie, like I'm like Ovid Elsie, that's near Owasso, you know what I mean? And um, I know you guys had the head coach there on, yeah. That one of the things. What What's funny about that is one of my one of the, my boss, I, you know, I'm a teacher in Birmingham and one of the guys that, um, that, uh, was my, one of my administrators, he's from there. And I told him, I go, you know, Ovid Elsie is a lacrosse pro. He's what? It's all farms. I'm like, I know, but it's, it's cool. They got, they got lacrosse. They're trying, right. They're trying to build something. Yeah, no, that, that, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but, um, you know, great guy, you know, love, loves the yeah. game. I saw that interview. It was really good. It was really good to see that, you know, somebody like loves the game and wants to be involved with it. So exactly. And, and, and for, you know, what's going on over the last, you know, what, uh, 18 months or we're into this now, right. year, yeah. you, know, you talk about, you talked about diversity and inclusion, right. And, and, you know, you, you, you automatically go towards, you know, uh, a color and, and race and things like that, but you got, you got social economical situations here. And so you, you look at, you know, you, you look at the brother rices and the orchard Lake St. Mary's and, and you look at the blessings that, that, um, you know, oh, yeah. that those kids have. And, and then you think about, you know, the less fortunate and you think about how, you know, how do you get the game of lacrosse in their hands when, you know, the gear's expensive. I've been doing it for heck. How many well, years now? I mean, it's, yeah. Are the irony of the, the what you're just talking about, you know, this this weekend was probably in this past week was probably the busiest week I have of the year. So we had Tuesday, we had you guys, right? Um, and then not, uh, not you know, that's brother rice, right? I know, but you know what I'm saying. We got we got rice. We had rice on Tuesday, which was a great game, it was fun to be part of, right? And then uh Thursday we played Huron Valley, okay, which is our kind of like you know, we know a lot, a lot of my guys know their guys. My wife teaches at Lakeland. It's kind of like fun, you know, so she's talking smack to her students. It's great, you know, and then, um, and then Saturday I played Dakota. Um, and, uh, and then Sunday, yeah, we did our annual mulch delivery fundraiser. That's right. We delivered, we delivered 5,600 bags of mulch, made a bunch of money for the program. I can buy more stuff. Like I'm going to buy probably like an end line net that we need for the program because 
you know, they're not going to, St. Mary's isn't going to front the bill for everything, but we're going to try to get as much stuff we can for the guys. You know, my guys, we actually have really nice swag, but we raise the money for it. I mean, yeah. we do a great job. You know, we get it from Stinson Miller. I'll throw that plug in for Sean, but you know, it's, uh, he does, you know, it's a, he does a great job and it's just, it's a great experience, a great time to bond, to get the stuff out. Uh, we, you know, social distance as best as we could and got all that stuff going and we delivered 5,600 bags of malt, you know, made a little money. Yeah. And that's awesome. And that's yeah. what, what's, what's automatically when you say that, right. And, and, and a school like Orchard Lake St. Mary's, right. Uh, right. You know, and you guys are out there doing that and you're raising money to, to, to buy stuff. Right. And, yeah. and so I think about it, we think about the MHSAA, you know, and I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but you, you know, you talk about the 300 mile rule and, and, and talk about a lot of these things that the MHSAA has had in place for a number of years that, that hinder, in, in my opinion, right. the game of lacrosse. But, you know, you, just as you did today um, or this weekend, raised money and you could spend that however you want to. And any yeah. school could do that. If, if a team wanted to go out because they wanted to, you know, you know play a game at Hopkins, you know, at Homewood Field, you know, right. I, against uh you know a team out there that that yeah. same caliber they should be able to do that they raise well, the money, right it isn't it, it is it's funny it's that. funny you say that because so many here's what's funny about the, the whole mulch thing and all, if anybody watches this and they want how we do it oh, just people. email me and i'll send you everything we do because i've been doing this for a long time i stole it from birmingham when i was part of the birmingham program and then I took it to Northville. We did it at Northville. It took me five years to get the Northville people to buy into it. And then they do it. They still do it. I think Brighton does it. Celine does it now. What? And because there's, you know, Jim Carl goes, you sell mulch? I'm like, oh, it's the greatest fundraiser. And then Celine, one of my assistant, former assistant coaches, is an assistant coach there. And they got it there. And and it's funny. I, I remember um, just being on the um, Facebook, like lacrosse community, right? And I was telling somebody about what's the best fundraiser. And I said, selling mulch, we make this, you know, they're like, what? And I'm like, just, I emailed them stuff. I go, it's a Michigan product, but I'm like, you just got to find your own mill, your own, you know, wood mill. And they, you know, that does this stuff and they prepackage it. You know, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's a great fundraiser and everybody needs mulch. I mean, who doesn't need mulch? I mean, right. Unless, you know, but it's, it's amazing. And we, it's a good fundraiser and yeah, you know, it's just, it's, it's just good because, you know, I, I do have, you know, like I said, I have kids who who come from nothing and then they, you know, like, for example, I have a, um, a Polish kid on the team who um, I don't know how it is with the kid, the Polish Catholic thing, but he, he lives in the dorms and he um, came to America. He doesn't have any family here. He's living in, in the dorms. He learned to play, he's learning to play lacrosse, never played in his life. He plays hockey, but he loves lacrosse. He's picking it up. He's the nicest kid. Um, I'm like, Hey, you can go, when you go back to Poland, play for the Poland national team. They need players. Yeah. How great is that? No, that that's, that's, uh, that's two stories in one bowl. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you know, to, to stick on the mulch real quick, um, yeah. you know, give me, give me some, you know, give me some details on that. I like to put it out, you know, on Twitter, um, yeah, you know, and I'll send you the stuff. I'll send you some things, and it's up. really a fundraiser. We do it every year. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm not gonna get into the money details about it, but you can, you know, whatever. But I I got the details. Like you know, we we buy it. They have five different types of mulch. Yeah, I mean, it is. We do sell it for more than what you can get at Home Depot, right? Well, but you're raising you're, money. It's a fundraiser, right? Yeah, I mean, we're not. You know, it, it's not. Yeah. A, you know, you're not in the park moving the things around and then find the ball here. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. It's, it's just one of those things that, you know, you're not selling pizza kits or, you know, cookies or anything like that. It's just, it's a one day deal and we deliver it. That's the best part, you know, right to their driveway. Um, it's, you know, you know, you got the team bonding piece of it. You're raising yeah. money and, and the kids, are parents so are involved. Everybody's involved, you know? I got Cujo. He's cooking food. He's cooking the hamburgers and hot dogs. I, you know, I no. no I, man. I, listen, I didn't get that invite because if I knew Joe Kajowski was cooking on the grill, I would. Oh yeah. Done that. <laughs> hey, I had to take him out. I, it was on Sundays. Like he's like, Coach, man, I got I, I miss a golf today. I'm like, Come on, Joe. Come on, help me out. Loves his golf. 
Joe loves it. <laughs> but it's, you know, but like I said, it's just one more. And here, here's the thing. Here's a guy whose kid's a senior, and he's like, I will do this every year for you. Yeah. You oh. know, but that's but that's what it's all about. Building the program. We're getting a good, we're getting we're we're building a culture. Um, everybody knows this is the day that this is what we do. Everybody is all in. It was fantastic. That's and all. It, it went, it did, it goes, you know, it does have its hitches, but we 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 work through it and we figure it out. What so. world are we living in where I mean every day <laughs> is, I mean it's it's like you know, the movie with uh, Will Smith and uh, and what's his name he called Hitch. I mean, that's <laughs> my life. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. No, that's good. So, yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there, right? I mean, the, the season's going. Yeah. It, it doesn't, it, it's, it's, for, for me, it's, it's just odd. Like, you know, Brother Rice CC is on Wednesday, uh, yeah. you know, and, and game. everybody watching this, you can, you can tune in. It's, it's going to be a chilly uh, but it'll be hot on the field for sure as, as the greatest rivalry, I think, in all of sports, personally. Uh, pretty good. Yankees, Red Sox, no, no. USC, UCLA, Michigan, Ohio State, uh-uh. Rice, CC. Anyway, uh, I'll be live streaming that uh, here right now, uh, or here on my channel, Losi's Locker Room. Um, and so tune in for that one. But my, my point was is that, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're hitting that, uh, you know, we're in the middle of April, right? I mean, yeah. it, it goes so fast, but for some reason, and maybe it's COVID, maybe it's it's the the you know really randomness of the schedules where people are dropping games and adding games, and it, it just doesn't. We really haven't kind of hit that solid. So that was that was the headache the year the week before, right? So so what was it? My our spring break, but it's not. I mean, I don't give. I only give the guys five days anyhow before that. Cause we have that Wednesday to like Sunday. Yep. It's like long, long 10 days. Right. So I give the guys Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Easter, Sunday, Monday, we go practice. Cause I know we always have two games that week. And usually in the past, like brother rice, we travel, we either go to Illinois or we go to Canada. That's the two places that I kind of had the connection. So one year I went to, I played um, St. Andrews in Canada. Um, and then we went over across the, uh, across the border and we played uh bishop diamond right so which was great right it was a great experience for the boys they loved it and then the next year we went to st andrews again we played another canadian team i can't remember the off the top aurora it wasn't was hill good. what's that was no it? no we can't play hill um but it was great it was a great experience getting to toronto going downtown taking the boys here taking the boys there you know getting the experience to travel and then come back and then we just get ramp up our season. That's what it's all about, right? You right after spring break is where you really kind of ramp it up. So, like especially with the Catholic League, I mean, geez, we play Brother Rice right out of the box, and then you know next week this tomorrow we play U of D. That following week we play De La Salle and CC in the same week, and then we end up with Cranbrook. So that's our that's our Catholic League right there. It's, it's done, you know, and, that, and then adding all the games in between. So like, you know, Lake Orion had to cancel with us last week. So we ended up playing, um, who do we play on Saturday? Uh, you played. Uh, crap, I'm trying to think who I played off the bat. Well, I played Dakota last week, but the week before I played, oh, I played Wall Lake Northern out of nowhere. They get had a game for us. And then the next day we played Celine and yep. it was, I didn't even schedule those games. Yeah, both one goal games. Both one goal games. They're good games, but it's like, it was experience and the film that we got from those games, the mistakes that we made and the, what we went over was really what helped us kind of propel ourselves into that, that rice game. Like, you know, that first half of the rice game was where I the best lacrosse you played in a long time. And no, I mean, and it's, you know, you, know you, you look around the state and, and, and you feel, you know, terrible for, for the kids in Northville, for instance, who are oh, in the two yeah. week pause, you got the, you got uh, East Lansing, um, and, and you've got people, because as I'm going through, me, you know, lax junkie as I am, as I go through and I look at everybody's schedule, right? I'm, I just started thinking when I can, when I have time, I'm posting games, uh, the schedule for the day. And, and I, did a, I did a cumulative roll up of, of the weekend and all the scores on Twitter, you know, at Lax Losi. And you, you look at the, you know, you got some teams with, that have played six games, seven games, and you got right. some that haven't played yet, Right. Right. And I just feel privileged that we are, you know, lucky that we've played six games and then I have another game tomorrow, which who knows about the weather for tomorrow. Right. But I'm right. We're, I told the boys dress warm, I go. you know, we'll be, Hey, if it's sleets, whatever, 35 degrees, we're going to be out there playing. 
All four um, because in, because two days or three days later we play Lakeview and it's going to be sixty five degrees. So you got to keep going. You got to keep playing. Um, keep the sticks going. Um, it's a, it's a grind. You know what I mean. It's three games a week right now. Yeah. Um, it's just and every day is a variable, right? I, right. I, yeah. I mean, and but no, the bottom line is we're having a blast. You know, that's the bottom line. And that's that's the most important thing. I yeah. Started talking about that, but you know, for the kids and and conversations. It's about them, right? Parents? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's not, yeah. We, uh, Brother Ice played uh, Cathedral on Friday uh, down in... Um, right, in Indiana. Yeah. Indiana. And, you know, in Indiana Tech, home of the Warriors. And, you know, I pulled in the parking lot. I said this on my broadcast. I pulled in the parking lot and you've got, you know, you've got Rice parents and the flags are out and it's sunny and you got the Cathedral parents and they got their flags and music is playing and they got barbecues yeah. And, and every, I mean, it was, you know, I just pulled in and I kind of just stopped and took it all in for a minute. And I was like, this, this is awesome because it was yeah. normal. And the parents had so much fun. I had to go get prepared for the broadcast as I always do the professional that I am uh, avoided all of that nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but, and that it, it's just every, every, every time you can get something that's normal, like, you know, you with the mulch, right. I mean, you know, two years ago, uh, it was you didn't do it last year. Didn't do it last year, but two years ago. Oh yeah, we, we rocked. Yeah, it was great. More, more. The more consistency, the more normalcy that we can get for the boys, uh, the, the better it is for everybody. Yeah, you know, one of the things I really noticed with the uh, with the stoppage from last year to now is like certain players that I have on my team, especially the juniors, are the ones that suffer the most. And then what I'm saying is that those kids didn't play varsity lacrosse and they really only had one year of jv so their skill level it, there's gaps and we've we're actually dealing with that you know we're really it's funny because um casey price who's my defensive coordinator is like it really hurt us it hurt us because i'm a growing program like i'm really trying to rebuild and get that going it really hurt us because a lot of the kids, you know, they're three sport athletes. They don't play summer. They're playing hockey. They're playing football. They're playing wrestling. They're doing whatever. Um, we're not that typical. Uh, half the team, half, you know, most of my guys are playing summer ball. Not all of them do. And that's okay. I'm not upset with that because I have pretty good athletes for the most part. Right. But it's like, but the, but those kids have missed that learning experience from last year where we could put our systems in and be prepared. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know? you break it down right and, yeah. and and you talk about you know you talk about leadership and yeah. typically you know your your incoming seniors have that year before as junior to learn from the outgoing senior class they learn right. to be leaders and right. these guys have no idea right i mean they're learning on the fly and then you, you work your way down and you say all right well those juniors two years ago were freshmen right i mean and, right. and, and you look at the sophomores, right? You got sophomores right now that the last time they played before this season, eighth grade, grade. it's crazy. It's so crazy, but you know, it's going to be okay. Like I'm, well, I'm pretty happy and I'm pretty, you know, like I said, there's, I know some kids are taking fifth years or whatever. And I get that because of the college scene. I was just talking to um, Casey Kajowski tonight about that. Yep. He's like, yeah, he goes, you know, I'm happy where I'm going. He's going to Baldwin Wallace. He's going to be happy. He likes the coach there. He loves the area. Great place. He's going to be, he's going to be great. Like I, he's one of the, you know, he's a captain of mine. I love that kid. He's going to do great there. So, I've done big things. So, uh, you know, I, yeah, you know, the family. So it's like, but you think about him, he's like, I don't need that. He goes, I'm ready to move on. He goes, but there's other kids that really do that need that maybe that fifth year because, you know, division one, there's a third of the scholarships got cut out, you know? So, those kids weren't getting opportunities and they might have to go to the fifth year and wait it out or whatever, um, which is fine. It's okay. Um, but I just think that the state of lacrosse is improving. It's going to get better. Um, I know it's like a crapshoot every week. It's like you're scrambling for games or you got to reschedule or whatever, you know, and I hate to, you know, Will, Will Smith. I mean, he's done an awesome job. Like Will Smith is our signer. Oh, I talked to him. He goes, he said, I, the I don't know who, I don't know who owes me more beers, Greg, you or uh, Jim Carl. <laughs> and it was kind of funny. So I'm like, I go, I already got a case for you, Bill. Just, you know, just got to tell me what brand and I'll bring it over for you. So it's like, you know, cause I, I mean, I know it's a, it's a thankless job what he does. Yeah. Um, you know, nobody realizes that first of all, we're a shortage of, of refs. And then we, 
and then you know we and then you know some how some people actually t- treat refs you know hey i'm not the most perfect person i know i do my share of uh oh <laughs> look at who's here all right random guest folks oh legend whoop, whoop, whoop. we got a random <laughs> guest it just says cos bull i don't know who that could be oh have no clue We'll, we'll see who that is. I may have to I may have to plug in here because uh, things could get a little crazy. Now, I want to stay on your point before we welcome our guest yeah. as he's connecting to the audio. But, you know, you just said you said something. Um, and, and welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Paul Cosgrove, connecting to the audio. So say hi when you're ready, Cos. But, Bull, you know, you said that, that the, the cross is going to improve. You know, I, I'm looking around the state, and this is one thing that I wanted to talk to you about. And I'm looking at JV programs that are dropping. I'm yeah. looking at numbers that are low, and I'm looking at it. And I'm saying, all right, the the Brother Rices, the Forest Hill Centrals, the Orchard Lake St. Marys, the those programs are are going to be fine. I, I look, I look at you know, um, you know, some of the smaller schools, and they don't have the number. No. And you know, what what. In my mind, I'm going, all right, how, what do we do about this? And Kyle, you can jump in on this too, but. It'll, it'll come back because here's the deal. I mean, I had the same issue this year. I mean, I told, I think I, you and I had a separate conversation. Before the season started, two weeks before, I had 80 kids pegged to play lacrosse. Right. Then all of a sudden, 20 kids tell me they don't want to play. Like, it was weird. It was, I'd never had that happen. And then, you know, you start like, did I do something wrong? Did I, you know, whatever. Um, but I think um, once they see, ooh, so once they, once they see the success. We left. Yeah, we'll be back. Once they see the success um, of these programs coming back and, and getting better and ramping up, um, I think it's going to be good. But I think, like you said, I think one of the things that I've seen just from teaching is the mental health of students. Um I think it's different. They're they're in a different mode. They have to they have to reacclimate themselves to the school systems and and society and everything. And they're just trying to figure things out. And it's just you know it's it's been rough on the kids. It really has. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about when I was when I was talking about that is we wait for Kaz to figure out. You know, I got to tell you, I've had Kaz on podcasts. I've had him on you know personal Zoom calls. I, I think he struggles with technology. Um, I don't <laughs> Zoom calls. We're not sure. We'll talk to him about it though. But the thing with lacrosse that I was thinking about is, you know, you, you've got kids that that start to play the game and it really, you know, if you didn't grow up playing it, right. And we look at a lot of the kids, you know, that, that in a lot of these schools, they, they, there's playing in sixth grade, right. Fifth grade, sixth grade and, and all the right. way. Then you yeah. start when they get to high school and, and you need a couple of years to really understand the game, to like it right to before you love it. You don't love it right away. Cause it's, it's hard to learn. It's frustrating. And I, and I, what I worry about is that we've lost, about two years of those kids where they were athletes or they were football players and they picked up lacrosse and, and they would have excelled. Right. And, and now we've lost that where they're like, yeah, you know, I, I, it, it's too late for me to try to pick it up at this point. What, what do we do about that? I think we just have to just keep, you know, I think the summer programs have to build up. You're just going to have to start building younger program, like younger kids for the love of the game. I mean, that's really what happens. I think a lot of times, um, from what I notice is kids don't really enjoy it because they're, they don't know what they're doing and they don't, they're not being taught like, like the right way. Are you saying, prob- I mean, would you, you know, say we have that, that we really in the state of Michigan, cause I feel this way and yeah. no knock I feel it, like you know, quality coaches. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, like, like one thing that I think Kaz will agree with me on the one, one of the things I see kids like young kids, they're just not even taught how to cradle properly, you know, like, a lot of these kids top hand cradle and you know and if you go anywhere on the east coast none of these kids are top hand cradle kids they 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 bottom hand cradle and that's the right way to, to throw you know catch and throw and it's just one of those things that i when i've had kids come into the program now having the coaching staff i have I, I we break it down i mean it's i hate to do that and i expect kids to be ready to go when they come in but we break them down and build them back up and are really trying to get them to do things the right way. Some kids, you just can't do anything about, this is only my, really my third year at St. Mary's. I know. It's, it's my fourth. It seems like you've been forever. Hey, I know that. You uh, know, it's, hold it's on. So, weird. so Kazi, uh, with the audio, why don't you keep the video? Cause we can see you and then call in via telephone, use the number 
and then let's go that route to try to get you inside the locker room. The locker room is very open and it's, you know, it's a fun place to be and the yeah. end and uh, Kaz can't get in for some reason. Um, so I, I think, I think there's a lot of things. I think I, I worry about the state of Michigan. I look at yeah. the state of Ohio. I look at the, at the quality of so many teams in the state of Ohio, right? I mean, Springboro and, and, and you look at Mason and, and you look at a lot of these programs in the state of Ohio that are really rising. I mean, Jerome Dublin, uh, J- Dublin. Really Jerome. good program. Yeah. Like, you know, and it, like, even like, like Olin Tangy, like, the, them and uh you know Olin Tangy Liberty, Olin Tangy Orange, you got all those teams are actually really good teams. I know Delaware's got a decent team. Delaware, I mean, like Delaware is not like you know your affluent cunt city. Right. I mean, Kaz knows he went to school there. Right. Um yeah, you, you you go down the list as I'm looking at there's Kaz. What's up, Kaz? Paul? No. No, we're not going to hear Paul. We're going to see him, though. So you, you take a look at Dublin. I'm liking the mustache, though, dude. I know. He, he looks great, but, you know. Legendary. He's like a method actor right now. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's just I, I worry about the game, but it, it'll play itself out. It, it, it always does. It's, you know, whatever's going to happen, happen. My, my concern as I, as I flip to it is, you know, what about – you know, some of the things and the restrictions by the MHSA. I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of coaches about how, how do we, how do we, because my, what I want to do, Bull, I, I would like to know, I would like a survey to be sent out to the coaches and I'd like to know how many kids are in your program, right? You know, right. Where, where, where is everybody? Where is the state of Michigan in terms of numbers? We hear about the fastest growing sport on two feet and this and that. And I saw a stat on, in Ohio where they're up, you know, a, a decent percentage in terms of participation. Well, and looking at Michigan, I'm going, I, I, we're not seeing growth. You want to know what, you know, what it, you want to know what they don't want to have happen is what's happening in hockey. So exactly right. Hockey has all these unified teams that aren't that great. Oh yeah, and I think it really hurts hockey. Kaz, let's Kaz, 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 you good? I mean, this is like a commercial of what not to do. So, but you're right, Kaz. He's using his phone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Can't hear you, bro. It's just, it's fun. Oh, connecting to audio again. He's like, what the? <laughs> so this is going to show up really well. Um, right. So you look at it and you say, when when you're looking at a kid who is talented, who wants to play at the next level, right. and you say, you know, the, the state of Michigan lacrosse season is 65 days long. Is it worth it? If I'm not, if I'm not at a yeah. time, well, am I going to get looks playing for my high school team. And, and you can go down the path of, you know, uh, the, the memories and, and fighting for your school. And yeah, and, but I think, I think but, a high school game is so different than the club game. 100%. Oh yeah. It's, I think it's, I, I was, I think a hundred percent it's better. Oh, I, and I think the reason being it's better because of the team aspect and the systems that we put in place and you're practicing every day with the same guys every day and the same coaching staff every day. It's not inconsistent. And, you know, there's a message to be, I mean, the bottom line, John, I don't, I, I mean, I go, you know, the game of lacrosse, I absolutely love it to death and everything, but I'm not out there coaching just lacrosse. Right. You know, there's life lessons that we're putting in there, you know, that, and that's, that's the way it should be done. That's so. always been the the talk when we talked about sports and it being paused or it being yeah. honed or canceled and, and people say, wow, well, it's just, it's just sports. What are we talking about here? It's not, it's not. Right. And the data and the data and the statistics and the, the the need of so many pieces that fall under the header of sports that provides. I mean, I, I don't know where I'd be today, to be honest with you. When I look right. back at my transition from going from Big Rapids, Michigan, right, where I was, a, you know, a, a big fish in a, in a small pond and then coming to Brother Rice High School. I mean, you want to talk about a culture shock. Um, right. you know, my good friend Paul Cosgrove. Uh, would would call me the hick from Big Rapids for like three years I, is what he called me and and it was beautiful a, and it actually t- I'm surprised I'm surprised we let you in exactly yeah. 
if, if I couldn't shoot the three and, and run as, as long jump as far as I could, there's no way I was getting in there. No, hey, John, it's all right. When I was, when I graduated high school, it's five, nine, 160 pounds soaking wet. So, whoa, you know. now that's scary. Guys, yeah. guys, we got audio. Paul Cos is good. Cos is good. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first time I, the, that I've joined where it asked for me to add, it was the system called me in order for me to connect through audio rather than it just yeah, you, the audio being you, you part of the link. Yeah, either way, you're in. Joining us, folks, uh, to Losey's locker room. Your first trip inside the locker room, Paul, is, uh, you know, welcome here. Welcome aboard. Thanks for coming in. I told Bull at the opening, I've just sent out a bunch of texts and a, and a bunch of emails and links and all kinds of stuff. So I don't know who's going to show up, even though we're not going to keep doing this for too long because people will tune out. They may have already tuned out already when we post this, but um because we, we've hit a lot of topics the um uh, uh lax numbers came out with the rankings uh, for the state of michigan uh top 10 rankings brother rice sits up at the top uh followed by heartland then forest hills central um all right those were the top three and then we kind of go down the list uh egr clarkston cc rockford brighton portage northern and then our good friend mike Terig teriglia comes in at number 10 rochester adams which is interesting, but it, it's all, it's all, you know, Play early. yeah, it's, it's, it's all whatever it can do. It'll be scramble eggs in another two weeks when there's six more games played. Legs. I'm a big fan. How does that align with the NPR numbers? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they haven't, have, is that, is that calculation run? Every time I go to it, it just shows me for the individual team. It's a little bit different. Um, I know, I know we're, we're, we're we're ranked obnoxiously high uh, in the division two. I think we're stuck in. Oh, nice! So it's kind of funny. Well, as I as I told uh, Greg Bull Durham this summer, uh, or during COVID, when I was just doing some random things um, on on websites and looking for stats and things to use in my broadcast, is that uh, Greg Durham was the what I well, you were number two, right? Oh. <laughs> you were the rank number. That's the biggest joke of all time, right there percentages of all coaches in the history of the state behind <laughs> Rob Ambrose was Greg Bull Durham cause how, what do you think about how many that? games did it say I lost no 20? it was like it was you were you were like 181 and 32 well I lost 20 in three years I can tell you that much so I, I don't want to play that. in my whole career I forgot the one Is this like, was it like an all-star game did the fans get to vote <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so funny. I'm like, what? That would make perfect sense. I'd vote for Bull, too. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's 32. It should have been 132. And that plummeted him down the list. <laughs> it's all well, good. Short-lived, short -lived, but you're at the top of the mountain there for a little while, Bull. Sometimes. Right. Sometimes. And you're, you're tops in my book, too, Bull. And Losey's locker room, for that matter. <laughs> Kazi. Um, you know, we hit a bunch of topics and you came in late and you had a lot of audio problems. So we're not going to give you too much airtime, but, um, you know, we, we talked about the state of lacrosse in Michigan. Um, you know, we, you know, bull is bull, hmm. bull, you're more bullish, I think in the state than, than I am in terms of the growth. I just see, you know, you look at a team I'm half full guy, I'm half full guy. I know that Northern just dropped their JV team, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And that's a, you know, that, that's a, that's a good uh, top school and, and who did Forest Hills Northern. Really? Yeah. So wow. you got them, you got Rochester Adams that didn't, you know, Trigley didn't have a JV team this year. They were looking to try to get a co-op going. Wow. So that's, that's cause I'm looking at it going, all right, you know, where are we going to be you know, this year, next year? Okay, fine. You know, juniors, seniors, but what about that next year when you got teams that don't have players now you're, you're scrambling to backfill. So cause bull and I talked about it at length, uh, give you a little bit of time to talk about it. Now you got about uh, two minutes. I don't even need the two minutes. I mean, that's just the, I think that goes back to the, to the same issue that we talk about with the sport. And that is you have to have the right culture in order for this sport to be sustainable because it's not football or basketball or, or even hockey or baseball right now. And even though the game has grown in the state of Michigan, it's become uh, as much as a social sport, if anything else, for kids to continue to participate at a high school level for programs that don't have a driving winning culture. So the fact that they don't have a JV team to backfill a varsity team, I'm going to guess is 
is uh, on the back burner. And it's not really a thought that they care about at this time because that's just not how they're structured. A program that Bull took over is different. You know, they want to excel at sports and they do excel at sports. Rice is rice. Um, you know, and all the other guys that we see when we're in the state, you know, state meetings, they all kind of have, you know, more than a little bit of skin in the game. They're conscientious about their program and the program continuing to strive and get better. And for anybody that's trying to deal with either younger programs in COVID, I just don't think they, uh, that they're willing to make that kind of commitment or not willing. Maybe they don't have the resources to make that kind of commitment right now. And they'll circle back when they have those resources that they can jump back in with both feet. Cause there's nothing really stopping anybody from getting out and getting back in. Right. Yeah. The, the, right now the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Um, you know, right. In a lot of situations. Well, you know, the other thing is like these youth programs uh, are hurting. Like they're not, the biggest problem is, 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 is coaching is coaching. I mean, we know that for a fact, right? right? And I mean, I mean, just for example, like Livonia's team almost folded. Right. And then eat like, um, but they're now they're, they're gaining um, wind, right? That's where I, li I live in Livonia. My daughter goes to Livonia Stevenson, but the boys program, that younger boys program, the middle school program, Zydell's kids going there now, Stan Zydell, um, who caused play with at Michigan State, and he's a good friend of mine. Uh, um, what is it called? The uh, OLGC, Our Lady of uh, Good Counsel, shut their program down, and so did St. Mike's because they didn't have the kids. So they sent them to Livonia, and they built all these. They built one big program now out of it. Yep, that's what they have to do, and that's what that's the most important level is that is that middle school level in order for these programs to survive because if they don't have feeding kids feeding in you know not playing baseball um they're they got to do something you know so i don't know so I, it's, I not, just, it's, it's not it's not attached to funding at all not necessarily they still charge the parents so, you know what i mean they're playing they're paying to play you know so oh, this, oh yeah this is pay to pay play for middle schoolers i mean as it ties back to the kids when once they get to high school, you know, what, yeah. what percent, you know, how much of these high school programs that are saying, Hey, we don't have enough players for a JV. How much of that is a decision that's based on funding too, right now, when, you know, sports aren't probably getting the same funding as they would have a year and a half ago. No, they're not. You're not, you're absolutely right on that. I mean, that's why we just talked about fundraising. I just, you know, I just ran my mulch fundraiser this last weekend. I, we, you know, we sold it all. Right. Um, and we delivered it this weekend and that's what I spent Sunday doing. Um, but that was a huge, I've been doing that for a long time. That's a huge help in helping get things that you need for your program. You know, I want to, I want to jump, I want to jump a little bit here because, yeah, um, you know, I, I look at, I look at the MHSAA, I look at the high school. We, we, we talked about the youth you've got, um, you know, you, you've got Culver, right. You got Culver Academy out there you know, post-grad, uh, they, they've pulled a couple of Michigan kids that have gone there. You've got Western Reserve now with Dylan Sheraton down there, who's a, who's a good coach and, and, and he can build it and he will build it down there. They've, they've, got, a, they've got a good team this year as well. Um, and, and then you've got Wheaton Academy uh, in Illinois and, and they're gonna be, you know, mark my words on this one, they're gonna be in the mix soon. And so you've got, you've got three uh, institutions like that You've got the state of Michigan in the state that it's in from a lacrosse standpoint. Um, you know, when you put all that together, I'm, I'm still trying to get to the point to, to show people that in my mind that we've got some issues here. I mean, why, why, why wouldn't a kid go? Why wouldn't a kid go to Western Reserve? Why wouldn't they go from Michigan down to there or to Culver or to Wheaton? Is Wheaton a well, cat? Let me ask you about Wheaton real quick. Isn't Wheaton just a normal, like a country day? it's 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 changing let's just let's just say that but i but i hear that's what i hear i because i was gonna because i was gonna play them because what's his name kid goes there yeah yep joey dell joey dell yeah so i was gonna play them last year obviously they didn't play them because of covid um and but i was curious about that say this i mean what's to stop that from happening here in michigan i mean if you're going to have these types of institutions in the state that are all going to be banned by the state of michigan Right, so so we're not going to be able to play Western Reserve. We can't play them now. Uh, Culver, we know. Hill, we know. Is this what's going to happen? And do you guys? And I'll put this. I'll pitch this one to Kaz. 
you know, do, do you see more kids sliding that and going that route? No, not, not yet. And it, it's mostly because there's one, there's a cost associated with going to those schools. True. Although they, they make the barrier to entry less if you show that you're a decent student and you have talent that overcomes all, right? It's no different than, you know, being a fifth year at, or even earlier and saying, Hey, why don't I just go further instead of going to Ohio or Illinois? Why don't I just go down to Florida, go to IMG. Right. Um, they, they, there are still those options that are always out there. I think it's tough for parents to kind of commit to that level of commitment, of, of commitment, not just for themselves financially, for the kid to be away from home. I mean, you're talking about very few people follow that methodology or even, even homeschooling to say, Hey, you know, I'm going to homeschool my kid and he's going to be a, you know, world-class tennis player or golfer or whatever. You know, or at least we're going to make a run at it. There's a there's a lot of sacrifice that has to be made, and I think even though you're only crossing state lines, it's a big deal. And and the problems with the state of Michigan, I don't think are going to really be magnified by those schools. The problems with the state of Michigan are aren't going anywhere because they're within the four walls, and it's it takes schools like like ours, you know, at Brother Rice or when Bull kind of starts to experience that more as he's, his program builds out, um, that you realize, well, we're, we're the squeaky wheel. No one cares about the effect of a lot of the Michigan rules on a school like Brother Ice um, because, and, and other schools could be in that same, I think Forest Hills probably is the closest in terms of them trying to reach out and get more in touch with other schools outside of the state and filling out their program. And their public school. What's that? And they're public. You know what I mean? Like, most of the time. Well, and they're, and they're, and they're public, but, re, but really that doesn't even play into it. Going back to Losey's original question, part of the problem that people have always ran, you know, raged against about Rice, and, and I'm really only speaking to what I know, is, well, they recruit. I mean, go look at any of them. Well, they recruit. They should be right. the best. That's Right. It's all nonsense. It's, it's, all morons. Ridiculous. it's all ridiculous. They're morons. I mean, all of our kids – you know, we have an occasional kid that will pull from De La Salle um, because, you know, they, they've shown a, a real talent and they want to play at the next level and they know they're not going to get that by the exposure they're going to get at De La Salle. So, right. you know, aside from something like that, which, by the way, is also a faith-based decision to go from there to here, right. or if they decide not to go to Birmingham, Groves, or Seahome or go to Brother Rice, I mean, hopefully they're not making the decision just to play a sport, but if they excel at that particular sport, what they're walking into is, you know, potential firestorm. Like Lowe said from Big Rapids, you think you're good until you get there and you realize, wow, I just made a school transfer choice and I might not even play. I might get cut as a sophomore and be done. Yes. And so there's a, there's a lot of different things that people can, can look to point at, but they always go back to, Hey, rice is better because they recruit. It's not. Well, you touched on it. It's we, we get kids that with a, well, you know, 40 years ago, the culture started being built and it was always built the same way. Put the best kids on the field and do everything you can to win and, and teach them life lessons along the way that are faith-based and, and our obligation and responsibility as coaches while we're there. Um, I didn't listen to him very much when I was a, when I was a player, but now that it's, it's our responsibility to pass that on, especially even now more than ever. Yeah. You're like, good. We can create an environment that kids want to play in. That's more important to most parents than, you know, the sacrifice they have to make to move someplace else. I think, I think the big thing with lacrosse right now is that my goal is to get the best athletes out and we'll teach them how to play because you really don't need that lacrosse player anymore. You need an athlete that you can get into a lacrosse player because what I, you know, that was my experience in Northville. I, try to get, you know, that was one nice, like Sean Dickens, the head coach here now, right now, Sean was in the school. He would take, I'm like, listen, find me five athletes, put them on JV. Let's, you know, we got, I, if they need a stick, I'm sure some of these kids have extra sticks that we can get them. Let's get them on the field. Let's teach them how to play, you know? Um, and then they fall in love with it. And then they learn and learn more and more and more. And then my last year there, you see, you saw the athletes I had. I mean, we had athletes. I mean, the guys are playing football, basketball, you know, soccer, whatever it may be, hockey. 
they're playing all these sports and lacrosse is just another extension of their athleticism. And that's what really I want to do at St. You know, at St. Mary's, there's tons of athletes running around that place. Yeah. Um, you, you, I mean, you look, you, know, at, you look at, um, you know, when I went through the schedule and then we're going to, we're going to switch topics. But when I was going through the numbers and, and I saw that, you know, Cast Tech has played seven games this year. And, you know, I, 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 I thought that was, I thought that was great. The athletes there. Won games. Um, and, and so I think that that's great. Um, so let's, let's uh, jump. Kaz, I want to ask you real quick. You got a big game coming up on Wednesday. Um, it will be uh, streamed live here through my channel, Losi's uh, Locker Room on YouTube. Uh, as you're watching this video, folks, please, when you're done, before you click off, hit subscribe. It helps me greatly, and I appreciate it. But, Kaz, uh, spend a little bit of time, because I don't want to run too long tonight, even though it's chaos inside the locker room. But talk a little about the CC rivalry in itself, as you were part of when you were at Brother Rice, and then also as you look forward to Wednesday evening. Yeah, I'm even, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be a part of it as a as a player, and that's, that's continued forever um, by – even the amount of people that tune into your live stream that are alumni, we get hits from around the country. People look forward to this game every year. The great news is that usually we get to play them two or three times a year. Um, the landscape looks a little different this year. It looks like anybody can win at any given time and all, you know, because of the lack of preparation that we've all had to, to deal with and trying to get players up to speed. But uh, the kids are really pumped. Um, it doesn't take that much to get fired up for your for your biggest rival, uh, regardless of the fact that it's lopsided. There's just as much pressure on our kids to, you know, continue what, what they've been doing as there is probably on CC to muddy the water. Um, and that's what we expect. We expect a hard fought game. And, you know, we we're getting better every day. So, uh, you know, we, we face the same challenge that everyone in the state of Michigan's had um, on a very short period of time with with not as many players as we would have liked, with a lot of injuries. Uh, we're comfortable with what we've got going into the game, and we think uh, we've got the, the tools in place to get the job done. But, you know, it won't be because of a lack of effort. It's going to be a good one. You mentioned it, Kaz. It's, when I look at the numbers, I've been broadcasting uh, the, this game, and, and then also uh, as, as it's progressed into the Catholic League finals over the last, uh, you know, every year, um, you know, this is the second highest – that uh, my live streams have seen, um, you know, in excess of, of 500 viewers. Doesn't sound like much, but for a small time operation like uh, Losi's Locker Room Productions, it's a big deal. So, you know, I, I <laughs> another, another good turnout for sure. Uh, I'm hoping the weather holds, but, you know, everyone, you know, mark your calendars again, subscribe. If you uh, enable notifications, it'll pop up every time I go live and, and that'll be good to go. Um, the other thing I want to ask you guys about, I don't know if, if you follow me on Twitter at, at um, Lax Losi, but I started this, you know, and it was just for fun, right? And as I started to do the, I started to do the, the games and I was putting out schedules for across the state. And then I was doing the, you know, what, what the scores were the next day. And, and I'm clicking around, I'm trying to find things and I got to go to different Twitter feeds to, to pull it all together. And then the MHSA has got some, but whatever. And so I started this thing, you know, it was called, um, you know, less clicks, uh, scoreboard picks. And so people started posting scoreboards. And I don't know if you, uh, Kaz, I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, yeah, I, saw. I mean, I, I really have found it fascinating to look at all the different scoreboards. I mean, I, I did it originally just, you know, to kind of do something fun. And it, it's really, it's really taken off. It's, it's, it's been very cool. And, and to see some of the scoreboards, like I saw Leggett's scoreboard and I mean, it looked like Fenway Park. It, it was such a great picture. And the scoreboard is great, and and then I've got I've got the folks down uh, in Monroe at uh, at uh, at St. Mary's Catholic Central, and they've got a flip scoreboard, right? And so you've got this wide range spectrum. On one night, I had you know the 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 monstrosity that is Forest Hill Central, right? Ranger scoreboard, and then I got the folks here at uh, as I said St. Mary's Catholic Central with the flip scoreboard. It really shows the the diversity of 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 lacrosse, but also you know how much people love it. Yeah, it's an easier way to tie into what's going on these days. Uh, your, the live stream is an easier way to tie into what's going on these days. Um, for anyone that wants to subscribe, that wants to go scout Brother Rice or to scout Catholic Central, subscribe. And, <laughs> exactly. you know, 
you you know my thoughts on that. I could care less. I think there should be a portal for all the high school coaches. They would have to put all their games in and drop them in just like college. Right. And if people can't adapt and they're going to run the same thing day in, day out, they should either be comfortable with their product and that they have to execute and you have to execute to beat us or you you make some changes. And I think that makes it more fun and it would make it easier for us to not have to do all the, you know, I don't want to drive to Forest Hill Central to watch a game because we can't get filmed from somebody. Not that they're not sharing, you know, not that we can't get filmed from, from some friends, but uh, it would just make the whole process a lot easier. I mean, it's just one of a, a litany you know, of things that could go better in terms of us not having to break our necks to go scout. Yep, I agree. Comment on the on the movement, the scoreboard picks, and then a little bit on that film topic as well. Do you like um, the, you like the the film? I mean, I, I, the scoreboards are cool. I mean, John, I, haven't, I, I didn't take any pictures of any of our games lately, but I'll do it next time scoreboard yet i'm a little I'm a little hey the eaglet scoreboard it was it was down the, for the count for our first game they had an electrical issue they had to dig up the whole line i don't know what happened um picture that now that would have been fascinating to take the, the picture of the line come the, the trench they had to redig. um <laughs> but uh i'll take the next time we have a home game which i don't even know when their own next home game is i'm trying to think about the, oh friday i'm playing at lakeview so i'll take a picture of that scoreboard that's gross um we love those folks. And, uh, and then, um, so, uh, but the film thing is absolutely right. Cause here's what's, here's what's so funny. I, I better be honest with you guys. I haven't done any film. I haven't taken one film of any game this year. Why? Cause everybody takes film. So I just ask them to send it to me at huddle. <laughs> it's been one of the best things I've ever. I don't know. I feel guilty. Like I'm just kind of like, you know, that guy that, you know, just, Hey, you got film. Can I have it? You know, whatever. But, um, but it's, you know, I have no problem giving anybody my film. You just tell me what game you want. I'll give it to you guys. And uh, anybody, you know, if, if you want to see this game or that game, or you want to see me play or our play, our team play, I don't want to see you. Play. I'm not, not me. Yeah. I don't. Um, but our team play, that's, that's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think it, like, like, I think cause is dead on. I think we should have a portal. We should be able to put stuff in there. And then, you know what? You could have a whole library of film. And then, you know what else? College guys could go in there too and see kids play. Singing the Especially same. if you use huddle breakdown. If you use huddle assist and it breaks down all the players, that's a really good tool. Yeah. It can help kids get recruited. I, I was, I, I had um, a, a couple of conversations with a, a couple of guys over on the West Side of the State. Talked to Mike DeWitt a little bit. Talked to Andy Shear at, 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 um, at Forest Hill Central. And, 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 and I was like, listen, there, there, are, there are so many things, guys. I think you said a litany of, of things that, that need to be changed, right? And, and, and I think that this offseason, and I've stressed this with any coach that I've talked to that would you know, give me the time to listen to me, that somehow, some way, you know, something's got to be, some, there's got to be some changes, right? Or some plan to change. And, and unfortunately, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bull, but you know, the, the, the lacrosse coaches in the state of Michigan you know, the, the, the strength of, of the coaches association, um, you know, I think to make changes and to be able to put a proposal in front of the MHSA is going to take some athletic directors, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, to, to get behind that. Um, because everything we've talked about on this, you know, in, in the locker room today is about the game, right? How, how do we help it? How do, how do we grow it? How do we not let it die? Because, I, I see these holes that, that, that I see coming, but we're talking about simple things like film, right? Like streaming, right? The MHSA says the only reason we're able to do this, you know, that my live stream for every game right now and have it open is because of COVID. But next year, we're going to go back to the rules where it's got to be password protected and you got to send the link out to all the fans and then you got to figure out how to do it. And, and it's just those types of things. There's so many little things that I think the state can do. Well, there's, there's a couple things that we can do. I mean, number one, um, we need, we need coaching training. Like we need coaching clinics to help these new coaches understand, like, you know, if Kai, I mean, Kai is one of the better minds in the game, right? If he, if he came to the coaches convention and say we had a, our own Michigan coaches convention and we just had some of the guys, you know, um, do specific things that they know the best, right? Like one guy, you can do defensive systems or off, whatever. You coach everything at Rice, doesn't matter. 
But you get my point. If so we have guys who have been around the game for a long time and know how to coach it and understand the game and what to do to build up. Like we could have a philosophy, how to build a middle school program, where to start with that, how to lead out. We could have fundraising program, like how to build fundraising to help your program. Yeah, yeah. Like just teaching coaches Simple thing. how to like develop a program and a culture so it sticks and people are constantly buying in. And then you just like, for example, Clarkston, do you think Clarkston's ever going to change the way that Clarkston runs like a well-oiled machine? I mean, Brian's done an unbelievable job there. Why? Because he gets the same guys everybody buys in, great coaching. He has parents that support it. He's got a high school that supports what he does because he's very successful. Yep. He does a fundraiser for um, cancer, which is great. and gets a lot of publicity. It's fantastic. And then if you can build things like he does, like if every public school can build something up to that point, it, it could be, it could be, it just will just domino effect. Yeah. But we all have to like kind of get involved with that. You know, like we coach, I, I don't, my, not my program is not the most established, but it's more established than most, you know? Yep. Yeah. So it's not CC, it's not Rice, it's not Forest Hill Central. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't, you know, need, it doesn't need to be. I, I look at, I, no. I look at Hazlitt, I look at a Hazlitt and, and, and the culture that they're building out there, um, you know, and then they're consistent, right? I mean, they're, 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 they've been consistently good. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, I, I look at a Celine as well, right? I mean, right. you know, you, you've got the, because you've got such large communities that are pulling so many athletes, right? It, it's just, it's just pulling them all together and, and building that culture. Like we talked about, you'll find this interesting is that I, I had a, I had a, a, um, a person in Ohio reach out to me to talk about, you know, brother rice and, and the structure and, and how do you do, you know, what, what do you do? Like, how do you get parents to do what and, and what are those jobs? And I went into the archives and I pulled out a, a program from our banquet. Um, and, and I took a picture because we've got one page that says, you know, parent helper does, you know, here's food for out of, out of town teams and here's scheduler and who works concessions and down the line. I took a picture of that and sent it to him. And I'm like, here you go. Right. And it, it's those simple things like that that make a difference in running a program. Yeah. Cool. All right. What else you guys want to talk about? Uh, we got about three minutes. Uh, I watched last night. I uh, was up late doing some work. And on Netflix, I watched the show Lubin, L-U-B-I-N. And it's French. And they flipped it into English. And it, it was about the gentleman burglar. And it was like a, a new age gentleman burglar. And uh, they only had six episodes. So I was very disappointed because I watched them all. I finished it like 4.30 a.m. <laughs> And then that was it. But uh, I would recommend that. Well, Kaz, I don't know if you're going to like it. I don't think you're going to. You know what I'm watching right now? What are you watching? Rewatching Ray Donovan, man. Oh, man. One through six, seven, eight. Eh, could have done without. No, I'm telling you. I mean, what? That that guy's awesome. What's his name again? Great show. Kazi, what do you got? Uh, what, what, What are you locked into right now? I'm searching a little bit. I've been watching a lot of lacrosse lately. Not our, not a. Not a high school lacrosse, but I've been watching a lot of these uh, college games, and that's kind of how I've been passing my time. You know, following some of the kids, following following Georgetown's success right now with uh, one of our former players on that team and their win over Denver, which which I think will catapult them um, regardless of the remaining schedule because they still have a decent schedule left. But I think that's enough to secure Georgetown probably uh, an NCAA berth for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so that's pretty much what I've been doing because I burned through all the other stuff. You and I have gone back and forth. I'm an Umbrella Academy fan. I'm waiting for all the stuff I watched a while ago to start dropping the new, is the new uh, season. We got, I know, I'm waiting for billions to come back. Up. Man, it's too man we got so much. Secession, woo! I oh, like another great show. Um, so we talked a lot, a lot of topics, and I appreciate everybody jumping in here. You know, we're, we're keeping this at about the hour range. Let me add one. As I check the couch, what? Well, let me add one because I, I was going to mention before, and I but I kind of waited. Fire cut. So one of the things, one of the things that I'd like to see is that it, that you know, and it's not to slight the MHSA, but as having to go through the rules every year. One of the rules this year that I that jumped out at me when I was listening to, to uh, Tom Ratchet go through some things. There was a special circumstance where you could apply for certain games, 
to play certain schools. Hey, if you had a special request, let us know. Give us, you know, give us an, enough lead time, and we need 30 days. I think it, if I can't remember what the time frame was, I needed to uh, review it. And uh, I, I called somebody right away after that, and I go, hey, l let me make sure I understood that right. Uh, one of the coaches on our team, I go, did you hear what I heard? That we could actually petition to play Culver or Hill or Western Reserve or whomever. And what I got back was, yeah, we tried that. And the answer has been no. It's always no. So, so why even have that as part of, you know, the, the possibilities in terms of improving something or, or a, a special uh, dispensation for us to go play another team or bull to play another team, or we're vacationing in New York and we wanted to play a team, whatever, whatever anybody was doing at the time. And it seems like if it's black and white, there are no special circumstances. So we're locked into the four walls that are Michigan. And I just point that out because it really pisses me off that I just sit through that and found something I thought we could act on. And we can't because as you know, we have some of those schools calling us, asking us to play. Right. And, and our answer is, uh, well, even though there's supposed to be an avenue for that to take place, they basically just, you know, they blocked off the entrance and said, don't even bother. Now, that's that's not out in the open, but that's what we're getting told. But what I what I think, Kaz, what, what the way that I understood it was, is that the schools that are, you know, the, the, the Culver, the Hill, uh, WRA, you know, those schools were banned and that there's no there's no getting around that piece. My understanding was it was open up an avenue that if we were to travel over 300 miles, that 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 you know you could play a game or you, you could get a waiver for that and something like you know we we could have potentially gone to you know Midwest this year where where Western Reserve is there we just couldn't play them but we could be at the event right if, as long as we didn't play them because right now I mean the, the the way the rule is written you can't even you know we can't even go. Well you know, one of the, one of the things I, I mentioned to Tom Rash and I go, you're going to tell me we can't play over 300 miles, but I can go to the farthest point in, in Ontario, which is almost like 700 miles and find some team and I can play them. Yeah. Because it's a neighboring, because it's a neighboring that country. Any, but at this, it, I mean, at that, at that point, that should be the circle point, right? Wisconsin. Uh, Right, you should be able to take a compass with a string and circle that whole area, and anything that fits in there, we should be able to go to. Listen, I looked at teams from Wisconsin, right? I mean, it, it, trust me, yeah. when, when I when I go through it, I'm I'm looking at, and so there's the um, I can't remember their name off the top of my head, but there's a, there's a quality team in Wisconsin. I've been trying to trying to meet somewhere, find well, somewhere, but um, Minnesota should be a bordering state because it, you I mean borders state like uh, Lake Superior, so why can't we go play there? Where Wisconsin, we can. No, Minnesota. Yeah, we right? can. Right? Yeah, you can't. We can't go to. I, Let them come down. Saint Saint, because huh? I, I I was I was looking at Saint Margaret. Um, I, I was looking at everything this year. Yeah. Listen, I, we're not going to obviously get this solved, but you, the, the, <laughs> I agree with you, Kaz. Right? I agree with you. You know, my vision, you know, three years ago was that I wanted. You know, I, I wanted you to be able to, uh, you know, reach out to some of your contacts, same with you, Bull, to reach out east, um, you know, and, and let's meet in Pittsburgh, right? That, that was always my goal. I wanted to meet at the University of Pittsburgh, and I wanted to have, you know, the Midwest versus, you know, the, the east. And you got four teams or six teams or eight teams or something like that, and I wanted sponsors and this whole big to-do, right? Now, people are going to say, well, then why, why would the east coast teams go there, right? I mean, why, why are they going to drive when they can drive two blocks, and play a top team, you know, a top 20 team in the country, why are they going to travel 300 miles? You know, I, I get it, but you know, you, you can't, you can't have these things happen if you don't make the effort. Hey, I'd, I'd host all the teams in a heartbeat. Trust me. We've talked about it, Bull. We're, we Listen, I got plans. All right. I got, you got, you got land, you got places to sleep. I got a lot of plans for you, buddy. You just, you sleep on those because at cause you, you see the official shirt of Losi's locker room now. Oh, geez. Look at that thing. Oh, I thought that was wallpaper. Oh, oh, you knew that was coming. I teed you up for that one, you son of a gun. Wow. Uh, we got to wrap this up. Um, I appreciate you boys jumping in here. As I said, that you know, the, the uh, head coach, Chris Colon, supposed to be Colon's co uh, corner today. Uh, he was detained 
And um, I'm not actually sure I haven't heard from him. So I hope he's okay. I'm going to reach out to him as soon as we're done here. But uh, Bull, good luck to you. Who you got coming up? You got uh, what? Uh, tomorrow night, UAD. Ooh. U of D. In the snow, rain, sleet, in the, in, at, uh, at UAD. And how bad do we feel um, about, you know, the, their head coach, the legend, uh, who can't get into the country to coach? I know. It's awful. It's Martinello, terrible. you can't even get here. And Kaz, you've got uh, you've got the CC game on on Wednesday, and then you've got uh, who's next? Uh, Forest, Hill Central, Forest Hill Central on Saturday. Oof, that's a tough week for the boys. What, what time are you guys playing them? We play Forest Hill Central, I believe, at uh, five o'clock or six o'clock. Okay, and that's gonna be good. And We're then uh, Wednesday's Wednesday's game is at um, six. Six? I think it's six. Yeah, Wednesday six. Wednesday six. Friday's five. Saturday's five. Saturday's five. No, okay. Saturday's five. Yeah. So yeah, we play Lake Orion on uh, Saturday. Hey, listen, in the end, all you need to do, folks out there, to catch both those games, just click on that subscribe button, enable your notifications whenever Losi's locker room goes live. You will get a notification, and you can tune in and hear the sweet, sultry sounds of my voice over the airways. Right. All right, boys, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, you Thanks, boys, yeah. And we can chit-chat a little bit more if you want to, or you don't have to. It really doesn't make any difference to me. But thanks for joining me, boys. Good luck to you in, in all your games and your endeavors and in your lives, you and your family. Uh, I am John Losey. Thanks for joining us, folks. And we will see you next time when we take a trip into the locker room.